a little elevation sensation. These things are always much more complex and complicated than maybe is perceived. They were, most of the things you discuss extensively don't happen. Um, this was posed by through Boston initially, and um, you know, we were obviously in the market to upgrade the bench. Clearly, we've struggled in that category, and um, we're looking to upgrade. We looked at a lot of different things, and uh, obviously we have to weigh the cost of doing a deal. Um, we, we looked at some players. Uh, we ideally wanted to preserve any future assets. We were already somewhat diminished in the pick category, and we wanted to not move any of our young players on rookie deals that we really like. So uh, it kind of made uh, a lot of our conversations difficult. But we found a partner in the Celtics and the Heat where the deal we feel like worked for everybody. A lot of times three-way deals, sometimes you can meet the needs of, of teams. I don't think if there was three teams, the deal would have gotten consummated. Um, so it was, you know, it was a week or two of discussions, and any time you add a third team, it does sometimes allow you to do a deal, but also it creates a lot of possibilities for a deal to fall through because this is another party involved in the conversation. But fortunately, um, the good thing is, is when you talk to somebody like Danny Ainge, and, and he was the one speaking to the Miami people, when you're working with organizations like that, you can trust what they're telling you. So we didn't feel like we were chasing our tail. We felt like this had a real chance of happening. And fortunately for us, it did. And, and we like it. We'll miss Tony. Uh, he was good for us. Uh, unfortunately, in, in the ball handling role, whether it was on us or him, it just didn't flourish, didn't, didn't, didn't work out like we hoped it would. And we hope we got a couple players that can help the bench unit and increase scoring and, and help us in that capacity. I said, uh, Danny, Danny, I don't know if he texted me one day or said to me, he said, you know, you owe me, brother. And I said, man, you already got me the job. He's the one that introduced me to Joe. So I can't really owe him any more than that. But um, it's, yeah, you know what? You work with people, like anything in life, you know, relationships matter. I don't know that that's the reason the deal got done. But like I said previously, when you're working with quality organizations, you can trust what they tell you. Having personal relationships is is good, but deals don't work unless they work for the organization. And we felt like this worked for us. Obviously, Boston felt like it worked for them, as did Miami. Everything got every everybody got something out of it that they liked. Talk about what you like about we like the fact that he's a ball handling guard. He creates his own shot. Great free throw shooter. That's another category we're we're, we're pretty beat up in. I think 24th or fifth in the league in free throw shooting. Um, we like the fact that he showed he could distribute the ball this year in a more point guard primary role. Uh, not afraid of the moment takes big shots, makes big shots. If we were at our game, our previous game, he, he hurt us. Um, he's dangerous is the word I like to use for a player like that. And, and when you're facing players, you're so paranoid a lot of times as the GM when you play against certain teams and certain players because you know they can hurt you. And playing against a guy like him, he can score 10 points in bunches. And that's, that's a factor that we were missing coming off the bench that we think we've been able to add uh, in a player like Jordan. We're worried all the time. <laughs> We're always trying to get better. I'm never not worried. I'll be worried tonight and be worried tomorrow. Um, that's what we do. We're always trying to get better. But we did feel specifically to your question about the backup point guard, Scott. We we did need to address it. Um, we felt like with Netovich, Bazemore, and Douglas, somebody would step into that role, and for a variety of reasons, uh, didn't happen or hasn't happened yet. And we felt like we needed to make a move. Uh, but we didn't we didn't make a move. I think in a rash type of way. We waited and, and were patient with it and actually would have waited longer to see if something developed. This happened to develop when it did. Both teams were ready to make a move and um, we felt like it was worth worth making a move for us. Bob, you mentioned that you don't, didn't want to deal the young players on rookie deals, didn't want to give them more picks. Does that mean that what you have here is what you're planning to take in April? No, I mean, I would say we're always open to any conversation, but in, in, in the position of a backup point guard, it's important. It is very important. But we also feel like heading into, into the end of the season or possible playoffs, Iguodala can fill that role in a lot of ways. But you don't want him filling that role and playing 42 minutes a night in the regular season if you can avoid it. So uh, to have a cushion a little bit in the point guard position was important for us. But as we move forward and uh, hopefully head into the postseason, uh, we wanted to bolster the bench, increase our depth. Uh, but in, in the way of what are we going to do next, um, 
Hopefully this works for us. This gives us two, three weeks before the trading deadline to evaluate it. Usually you make moves right up to the deadline, and then you, that's it. you got no more moves to make. Uh, now we have two, three weeks, I think 14 or 15 games to look and see how this works. But at some point you want to take a step back and give things time to uh, digest, give things time to work before you jump to conclusions and make moves. You don't want to be making moves all the time. He was good. He's been good. You know, a lot of times players do well in certain situations and not in others, depending on opportunity, depending on system, depending on fit. Um, we think he's a talented player. He's shown he can play in the NBA. Another guy that can create his own shot. At one point was, uh, was I believe, starting for Brooklyn and New Jersey. And, uh, again, a little bit of punch off the bench. And it'll, it, it, it's, it's a player that's on last year's deal. Gives us a good chance to evaluate him and uh, see what he can do for us. And our coach is very fair in giving players opportunities. We've seen a, pretty much every player on our team on this roster get an opportunity from top to bottom when they've been healthy. So if he gets an opportunity and embraces it and does well, I think he'll see some minutes. Do you feel like you've uh, come a long way toward answering the void left by Jared Jack uh, leaving as far as offense off the bench? You know, I don't know that. I think the idea when we went into the offseason was to certainly evaluate whether to re-sign Jared Jack or not. The Iguodala thing came up, and we pounced on that, which I believe – gave us what we thought was a little bit bigger, better version of, of Jared Jack. So I think I listened a little bit of what Coach Jackson said, what Mark said, and he, he addressed it in the way of we don't need to replace Jared Jack because I'm not sure Jared Jack on this team as it's consummated would have the minutes or opportunity that he got last year. So that being said, I'd love to have Jared Jack on the team. I mean, he's a good player. It would work. But obviously you have to look at the financial implications of having a player like that, and he signed a, a great deal, and we're very happy for him. But we felt like we needed a player to spell Steph Curry a little bit. His minutes were, were high. And not only his minutes, but the mental part of knowing when you check out, you're probably heading back in. Um, and now we feel like, at least in Crawford, our hope is, and, and also potentially Brooks, that the bench cannot just hold leads, but potentially increase leads. That would be the ideal scenario. Does this deal keep you under the tax threshold? Yeah, we're about a little two, two million and change still under. Um, but I will say that there's no mandate from Joe or ownership to, to stay out of the tax at all costs. If, if a deal presents itself that we feel like moves the needle in a significant way, we'll go into the tax. Um, but, uh, again, you don't do that. You, you're, you're, you're smart about going into the tax. It's, it's a real thing, not just financially, which a lot of people view it's only a financial a punitive measure. It's also system, uh, system limitations that are created by going into the tax. You know, look, I mean, you, you can evaluate the roster in a lot of different ways. Um, the bench, we felt like, statistically needed work. Obviously, the eye test, we felt like it, it needed an upgrade talent-wise. And we, we think we did that. You know, you never know how these things play out, but that was the hope with this deal. Uh, the starting unit, when, when you evaluate it, I think it's off the charts as far as, I think, points per 100 possessions, best in the NBA. I think when we're healthy, like, I don't know if it's 20 and 3. You guys probably know more than me, but it's 20 and 4. I guess if I had a problem with that, I'd be a perfectionist. I mean, that, that, that's pretty good. Uh, we've got a long way to go. We, we still have to, uh, and we've got a lot of tough games coming up. And, um, you know, it's, we learn something every night by watching the team. It's, it's still a group of guys that haven't played that many games together. So we'll see how cohesive it can become, and hopefully it'll improve as, as the season goes on. Do you feel like this roster has, has enough to be among contenders for a championship? You know, I, I think in answer to that, that question, Antonio, until you've actually seen success in the playoffs with your roster, it's hard to predict what success may or may not come. We've seen success in the regular season up to this point with that roster, with the roster as constructed. Playoffs are a different brand of basketball. Um, you know, it's, it, you can speculate on what will work and what won't, but until you actually see it on the floor, it's hard to really know how well it will work. We believe it has a chance of working. Uh, it's, it's, it's similar in some ways to what we did last year, but remember, last year David Lee was out, no Iguodala. Jared Jack. I mean, there's a lot of uh, parts that, that are going to be different uh, if we make playoffs this year and, and, and hope to, to move on. So we think so. Obviously, we wouldn't put the roster together if we thought it wasn't any good. But you don't know. You don't really know the answer to that. I think certain teams that have been there before, like the Heat and the Spurs and teams that are bringing back the same core, of course they know those rosters work. Um, we're still figuring that out.